Well, today we are in Coimbatore. We are here at the race track, the course track, in fact, and we're here for a very special car. We are here for the Tata Altros Racer. We already have seen this car at the Auto Expo last year, and Tata Motors has finally decided to launch this car. It comes with a 1.2 turbocharged petrol, which makes 120 bhp and 170 nm of torque. You also get a six-speed gearbox, and the 0 to 100 figure for this car is in a very impressive 11 seconds. Yes, it is impressive because uh, this segment doesn't really have cars which offer you great performance. So, how is this car to drive? How is this car to sit in? How is this car in terms of ride comfort? We'll answer all these questions in today's video review. We won't get into the design details because we've already done that. But let's talk about the interiors, the features, as well as the driving bits. My name is Ashish Masi. Welcome to Times Drive English. Well, so now I'm inside the cabin of the Tata Altros Racer. I have to say that the quality of this cabin is quite good. It always has been a nice cabin. Now, how does it stand in front of the i20? Well, I have to say it is uh, almost at par with its main rival, the i20. Uh, the plastic quality on the top is good, but towards the lower part, some of the plastics could have been slightly better. So that's something where Tata can still improve. Uh, you also get lots of equipment. Of course, you get digital dials. You uh, get automatic. Uh, Headlamps, you also get cruise control, you also get a voice enabled sunroof. Yes, so all you have to do is press this button. Say a command. And then you need to say something like this I want to see the sky. Okay, opening. And then the sunroof opens up, so that's something which is quite fancy. Seat comfort is good, you get automatic climate control, you get lots of connected apps, uh, you get big door pits where you can keep those big bottles and of course the doors open nice and wide at a 90 degree angle so that uh, ingress and egress is quite good and of course the build quality is quite good because the doors have that very solid and conference inspiring hard. Now you also get this huge box over here where you can keep your sunglasses and other paraphernalia and of course the glove box also is nice and deep and it's a cool car box which means that on those long distance journeys you will have no issues. Now this car has a lot of orange elements around the AC vents on the seats and of course the gear lever because it is the racing uh, version. So if you don't really like orange color then you might uh, you know have two things uh, to say about it but if you prefer this orange and you don't mind it then it really looks nice sporty and quite good. Lots of black, lots of grey and shades of uh, you know light grey as well. I think the cabin of this car deserves a good score of 9 out of 10 because it comes loaded with the features, with tech as well as a feel good factor uh, which is hard to miss. Now let's jump in the back seat and see how good that really is. Well, so now I'm inside the cabin of the Altros. In fact, I'm in the rear seats. And I have to say that the headroom is quite generous. The room also is decent. And you, of course, get pockets over here in the back of the front seat. So you can keep, you know, your wallet or some, some small stuff. The windows are also nice and large. So you don't really feel claustrophobic. And of course, uh, the door bins are decent. They're not the biggest, but they're decent to house uh, maybe half a liter bottles and stuff like that. You also get an armrest, but there aren't any beverage holders. And the backrest angle also is quite good. Now you don't get a headrest for the middle passenger which is quite odd because this car can generally have three people at the back because the floorboard is flat and it is quite a nice and wide car. So three people at the back should not be an issue. But why has Tata Motors uh, done some cost cutting over there? It's a bit of a surprise. Your own AC vents and USB old school is also available inside this car. Now even at the back you get this origin white stripe over here. And the cabin is completely dark and black, so some of you might feel claustrophobic or you might think that it is claustrophobic, but it's not because you get a nice and large sunroof and of course you get big windows. I'll give the back seat of this car a strong score of 8 out of 10. Now I won't show you the boot, but we will take this car out for a spin because this car is all about the driving and tell you what a big difference that 1.2 turbocharged 120 bhp engine makes to the whole characteristics of the Tata Altros. Well, so here I am driving the Tata Altros Racer. This car comes with a 1.2 petrol, which uh, makes about 120 bhp and it makes 170 newton meters of torque. And all that power is transferred to the wheels via this uh, six speed manual gearbox. Yes, it's a six speed manual. Uh, now, what the extra six speed does is essentially it gives you great flexibility, especially on the highway. So maybe you're doing speeds in excess of 100 kph, the engine spins at around 20 
200-300 rpm which makes the cabin a relatively isolated place to be in uh, but that said the engines uh, noise vibration levels could have been improved especially when you rev it up hard you can uh, feel the thrum of the engine and some of the vibrations do filter the cabin through the gear lever as well as the clutch especially when you're at standstill so that's something uh, which a lot of customers you know will feel uh, so that is something which uh, Tata Motors should improve because uh, the Franks from Maruti which also has a turbo and uh, the i20 line which also has a turbo and they sell at roughly the same price point both of them offer you better refinement levels than this turbo engine so that's something which uh, Tata uh, maybe can improve what they can also improve is the gearbox quality because the gearbox again on both the cars which are in the same price bracket the rivals really is better uh, the clutch action also could be a little lighter it's a very heavy clutch in that department and these are things that can be improved what uh, there are no complaints about is the ride comfort is the best car in this segment for sure the ride comfort it really does go over those bumps and potholes with very good authority it just annihilates all those badly passive roads and eats right into those badly passive roads so no complaints about that as well and uh, what you'll also like is the steering wheel because the steering wheel is very accurate it has a lot of weight and it gives you very good feedback as well so those are things which customers will enjoy about the Tata Altros the acceleration well Tata Motors claims an acceleration figure of uh, 0 to 100 in 9.2 seconds and I think these are respectable figures considering the size and the segment that this car is in what you'll also like is the nice and chunky mirrors and visibility all across is generally quite good so where's my final score with this car well I have to say that uh, it is a good package it's a powerful package but somehow it just lacks the overall refinement as well as the overall sophistication and the finesse that its main rivals, especially cars like the Franks and the i20 headline f because both those cars also come with a turbo and uh, this car definitely could do with a little more refinement especially at idle speeds anyways guys i'll give this car 89 out of 100 in the driving department if for the refinement levels are better i could have easily given it a better score of 95 out of 100 now it's time for me to stop the car and give you a final summary report Well, so overall, if you're a fan of the Tata Altros, and in particular of Tata Motors, then this is uh, the best version of the Altros to pick the racer. Uh, but it is a little expensive, and at the same price, you can get the Hyundai i20 N-Line if you want a hatchback, or you can also get the Nexon and the Punch, the top version of that car, uh, if you're a fan of SUVs, which really are the flavor at the moment, and everybody loves SUVs, so you can also choose those two cars from the Tata Motors family. This one is good in terms of performance, in terms of ride comfort, as well as the overall features, but that said, it still doesn't offer you that same kind of sophistication that a Hyundai i20 N-Line offers and doesn't have that same finesse when it comes to driving in terms of the overall refinement as the i20 N-Line offers. So do check out the i20 as well and do check out the Nexon and the Punch at roughly the same price point as well. MG just completed its 100 years and to mark its centenary year, the company has brought four car models into a special edition. What are these cars? Well, MG Hector, MG Esther, MG Comet and also MG ZS EV. Now, this special edition has a very stunning color to offer, which is the British Racing Green. And there's actually a very good history behind it, which I'm going to tell you by the end of this video. Hi, you're watching Time Strive English. It's me, Pavni Jain. And in today's video, I'm going to talk everything that has changed into the new MG Hector special and limited edition car variant to mark its 100 years. Let's begin. Of course, I'm going to start with the exterior and see what all has changed on the front side. Well, to start with, you do get the dark chrome diamond mesh grille on the front. Yeah. And to be very honest, I'm not really a fan of this dark chrome and I'll tell you why. Because this is technically a smudge magnet. It gets really very dirty easily. Other than that, you do get LED projector headlamps outlined with piano black finishing. You do get some dark chrome on the skid plate as well. So this is how the entire front of the car looks. Let's get on the sides and see the profile. So this 100 year limited edition offers 18 inches of tires with 215 section. These are all black alloy wheels. On the ORVMs, you do get black finishing right here. Now speaking for the chrome finishing again, you do get the chrome finishing 
here which covers the side of the car entirely but again just to mark that it is a special edition you do get dark chrome finishing on the door handles and also on the cladding now with this special edition you do get starry black roof and also the piano black roof rails with integrated black spoiler you also get the shark fin antenna which is black complementing the roof and the roof rail now please have a look at the tailgate itself the noticeable things are going to be the dark chrome finishings which you are going to see on the hector emblem and on the mg emblem as well the tail light is going to resemble with the black chrome mg hector variant which you might have seen if not please go to times drive youtube channel just to see and check out that video as well Okay guys one prominent thing that is missing from the special edition which makes it special is going to be the 100 year batch that you're going to see on the rear side which is missing from this one but if you are planning to buy the special edition you will get that with your car Now I'm inside the car and one thing for sure and that is your sound experience is certainly going to elevate because the 100 year limited edition offers infinity speaker system in this one And did you guys notice the all black themed interiors of this car? Well, this also resembles the black strom interiors of the MG Hector. Other than that, you'll also get to see the gun metal accents in the interiors, be it on the center console, be it on the dashboard, or even on the doors. MG Hector 100 year limited edition comes in two seating options, five seater as well as seven seater, and these options are based on the Shark Pro variant. Well as a prospective buyer you will have to pay 20000 rupees extra to buy this special edition and the exact prices for the diesel manual and petrol CVT are mentioned on the screens right now and if you want to see the prices of the other cars of the special limited edition that is also available on the screen right now now it's time to listen to the story let me take you back to 1902 when it was england's first time to host the prestigious gordon bennett motor cup which is a predecessor to now known as grand prix Well at that time the maximum speed limit of the country was just 12 miles per hour. Yes I know way too less. And that is why they decided to move the race to Ireland. Now inspired by the greenery and the scenic views of Ireland, the British racers painted their cars in the green color just paying homage to the host country, right? And that's how the British racing green was born. And that's what you see on the new limited editions of MG cars as well. Well, if you like this story, let us know in the comment box. Well, so here I am driving the Kia Sonnet. This, of course, is the updated version of the car. And today's video, I'm going to give you some positives and talk about maybe a few negatives as well. But we'll start off with the negatives first because uh, if I start with the positives, then you'll say I'm trying to be a Kia salesman and trying to push this car sales onto you. So we'll start with some negatives first. Uh, now the first big negative on this car is the fact that uh, yes the space in the back seat the rear seat space is a little cramped it's still a little tight and it's not as good as some of its rivals the Brezza the Nexon still offer you a little more space and that means that if you're planning to go on a long distance journey with your entire friends uh, maybe five friends are there then you'll have to ask one of them to maybe stay home or maybe take another uh, bus or something else because uh, having Five in this car will really make the cabin feel very packed. So four at best, or maybe even three, is ideal, uh, especially because uh, the back seat doesn't offer you the same kind of space as South Royal. So that's one big uh, area of weakness for the Kia Sonnet. Now the second big negative is the fact that the suspension of this car is on the stiffer side. Yes, uh, Kia has uh, made the suspension of this car slightly. Uh, stiff, uh, which is great news for people who drive a lot of the highways because on the highways this car feels rock solid and offers you a great sense of confidence. But the downside is that when you're driving this car within city limits, when you're maneuvering over those badly passed roads, when you're maneuvering this car over those uh, rumble strips, then some of those potholes and some of those patchy roads can just fill into the cabin. So it's a positive for highway use, but a bit of negative for people who drive on a daily basis within. the city limits so the stiff suspension is uh, not really very good especially when you compare this car with its rivals like the venue like the brezza and of course like the nexon and the suspension of this car does seem quite uh, stiff so the two big negatives the third big negative is the fact that uh, the top of the line versions of this car the top end versions feel a little overpriced feel a little expensive especially this one that I'm driving the automatic diesel 
it definitely uh, feels a little expensive uh, but to be honest there isn't any other automatic diesel with uh, torque converter gearbox available in the market uh, at the moment in its rivals so that is you know what you have to pay for getting better technology as well as getting access to an automatic along with a diesel engine so these are three big areas uh, of weakness on the Kia Sonnet but there are lots of positives so sit back and relax because uh, this part of the video will be a little long Now the first big positive is the fact that the car looks really very good on the outside. In fact, when uh, the driver came to drop this car at my place and he was parking it, I could only see the back side. I felt like by mistake, they've sent me the Kia Seltos. Yes, I actually felt that uh, it does look uh, just as good and just as big from a distance as a Kia Seltos does. Uh, now that uh, would be something which could be excused if you're not an expert or maybe you don't drive cars every day. But for someone like me, to actually say that this car looks like a Seltos from a distance was something which, you know, I had to really apologize to the driver because I did tell him why you're doing the Seltos and he said, no, it's not the Seltos, it's the Sonnet. So it really looks good. It looks bigger than it is and it looks very sharp and everybody in my neighborhood actually came up to me and said that this is really a good looking car. So that's a very big positive. When this car is standing in your driveway, standing maybe in your parking slot, then you will have a sense of pride when you watch it and see it because it really uh, looks so good from all angles, front end, back end, side angle, everything is quite good and well balanced. So that's one big area of positivity. The second big uh, positive, of course, is the fact that this car uh, has all the bells and whistles. It has all the kit. Uh, it feels very premium, very plush inside, cool front seats, uh, it has, you know, both sound system, <laughs> really it feels very good, very premium and all the, the switches, all the materials, they also offer you very good uh, sense of uh, touch and feel because they really are made from soft plastics, so it also has that sense of, you know, being a high quality car and that also gives you a sense of uh, plushness inside the cabin, so that's another positive. Rich features list along of course with the fact that uh, you get such a nice and plush cabin and such a nice and plush interior is another big positive on the Kia Sonnet. Now the third big positive is the fact that the boot of this car really is massive. It's the biggest boot on any compact SUV. Yes, you might say that, you know, there's a bit of a compromise in terms of the space in the back seat and you're right, there is. But when it comes to boot space, there's no compromise on uh, the Kia Sonnet. It really is huge and very massive. And that also means that, you know, if you're traveling on long distance journeys, maybe with your wife and two kids, then no issues whatsoever in terms of uh, hauling in all your luggage, all your equipment and, you know, uh, going off for that weekend getaway onto the hills. So that's also a major area of positivity. The fourth big positive is the fact that uh, the overall features list is good, but you also get a very good variance uh, list. Yes, the variance uh, options on this car is humongous and you might get confused because uh, there's a turbo petrol, uh, there's a diesel, there is a non-turbo petrol, there are manuals, there are automatics, there are IMTs, basically clutchless uh, manuals. So really, this car has it all and uh, you know, if you want a car with sunroof, you can buy that. If you want the base version, you can buy that. So it has a very extensive variance list and that also adds to the overall uh, buyer satisfaction because you can choose what kind of variant you want and what you want in your car and how much budget you want to spend. So all the permutation and combination options are available, uh, which is again, a very positive thing and of course uh, the fifth reason why I should consider buying it is simply because of the excellent turbo petrol engine and of course the fuel efficiency of the diesel yes so the turbo petrol is the one to go for if you are a keen driver if you're an enthusiast and of course the diesel is the one to go for if you drive a lot maybe 100 or 110 kilometers on a very regular basis on a daily basis then the diesel is the one to go for as I said before this combination of a torque converter gearbox and this diesel engine isn't available on any other car in the compact SUV space. So that's also quite a big positive that you get. It might be a little expensive, but then again, you get the best features list and the best interior quality, which more than makes up for uh, the slightly expensive sticker price on this car. And of course, as they say, all good things uh, come at a price. And this one, of course, is quite a good and very well sorted out package. So these are 
my positives and negatives uh, of the Kia Sonic 2024 or hurdle. If you have enjoyed watching this video, do let me know uh, what you think. And in case you think I missed out a few positive, or maybe a few negative points, then you can let me know in the comments section below because I might have missed out one or two things which you might feel are important. So do let me know about some points which I might have missed out. And before I forget, always remember to belt up whether you're sitting in the front or at the back. As per predictions, the electric two-wheeler market in India is expected to become one of the largest markets by 2030. Every manufacturer is aiming to secure a significant share of this market as it grows. And to achieve this, companies need to develop products that meet the demands of a broad and diverse audience. Aether is attempting to do just that with their new scooter, Rista. But is it practical enough to appeal to a wider audience? That's what we'll find out in this video. And in the later part of the video, we will talk about Thasu and not Thasu elements about the new Aether Rista. Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Times Drive English. I'm Ankur Taneja and let's begin the review of Aether Rista. Now first, let's talk about the design and feature that are there in this Aether Rista. Starting from the front, you get the complete LED setup in the headlamps and the turn indicators and the Aether badging in the front. This is the dual tone version. There are four dual tone color options in the Rista and three monotone color options. And you get the body colored mudguard in the front, telescopic forks. And there's a disc brake in the front, but it does not get the ABS feature. It has the combi braking system, CBS is there in this Aether Rista. The tire size in the front is 12 inch 90 section and the rear tire size is 12 inch 100 section. Moving towards the side, now it looks longer than the usual scooters if you talk about the current ice scooters or electric two-wheeler scooters that are already in the market and that is mainly because of the extended rear section of this Rista and over here you get the Rista badging and this is the top spec variant, the Z variant. There are three variant options in the Rista. The base variant is S and you get the 2.9 kilowatt hour battery pack in the base variant. And there are two battery pack options in the Z variant. One is the 2.9 kilowatt hour battery pack and another is the 3.7 kilowatt hour battery pack which we have today with us. Now the rear section of the system might look a bit awkward to some of the customers that are planning to buy the scooter or some of the customers who are familiar with the design of scooters and that is because of the extended rear end of this scooter and you get the LED setup and a sleek tail light and the turn indicators and the Aether badging in the rear and there's this backrest for the pillion which you only get in the Z variant not in the base variant which is the S. The seat here looks quite big and offers good amount of space for both rider and the pillion over here. Now let's talk about the instrument cluster, the screen that is over here, the 7 inch digital color display that Aether is offering in this Rista. So only the Z variant gets this 7 inch color TFT display which comes with the Google integrated maps and the WhatsApp notification feature and there are also some other features that are only there in the Z variant and in the screen but in the base variant you get the deep view display and not those features. There are a couple of other features that Aether is offering in the top spec or the mid variant of this Rista. Apart from that, the information that you get over here is the range, battery percentage. There are two driving modes, Smart Eco and Z. And you can switch between those modes from here. And you get the Bluetooth connectivity option, motor turn off, turn on notification, side stand indicator, high beam, low beam. And this SC means skid control feature that is there in this Rista. Apart from that, there's these icons. From here, you can operate your Google Maps and you can see the list of connected devices with the scooter document storage vehicle details and in settings you get to see the bluetooth turn on turn off option display adjustment options and there's this feature called magic twist which i really liked and in the vehicle settings there's option of turning off and turning on some of the features that are there in the Rista. Apart from that, on the left side of the handlebar, you get to see the high beam, low beam, and the joystick to control the screen over here and turn indicator, horn switch. And on the right side, there's this reverse mode button. There's dedicated button to switch between different modes and the ignition switch at the bottom. Now the boot space that is there in this Rista is around 36 liters. And there are a couple of cool features in the Rista and one of them is this bag, which you can fit in the boot of this Rista. 
You can buy all your groceries stuff, all of them in here and carry this bag along with you once you reach home. So this is one of the features that is there in the Vista. And there is no separate dedicated USB charging slot in the front section. You have to keep your phone in the boot to charge it. Now this is what you get in terms of design and feature in the Aether Rista. Now we have with us today is the top spec variant of this Rista which comes with a 3.7 kilowatt hour battery pack which offers around 4.3 kilowatt peak power and around 22 newton meters of peak torque. Now let's move forward and talk about the performance, comfort, ride and handling part of this Aether Rista. In terms of performance, Aether Rista is not as quick as the performance-oriented electric scooters, but it's fast enough to make a family rider feel safe. The overall ride quality is balanced and maneuverability is good. The suspension setup and the seat cushioning provide a comfortable ride. Although it does not have ABS, the brakes work well at both high and low speeds. One feature I particularly liked is the magic twist where turning the throttle backward activates a regenerative mode. At certain speeds, you won't need to press the brakes separately and it works perfectly. And features like traction control add an extra safety element to the scooter. Now let's talk about the Dhasu and North Dhasu elements about the Aether Rista. First, let's talk about the North so Dhasu elements. First in that list is the missing option of USB charging port in the front section of this Aether Rista. And the second North Dhasu element is the rear design now some might like it and some might not but this is what you get in terms of rear design in the Aether Rista. and the third not so element about the scooter is the plastic quality over here at the handlebar which is not so good now let's talk about the thasu elements of this Aether Rista. apart from the rear end the overall design the fit and finish is really good and i really like the front end and the side profile of this Aether Rista. The second Dhasu element is about the screen, the 7 inch color display that is, that is there in this Rista. The visibility is really good and there are lots of features that Aether is offering in this instrument cluster. And the third final Dhasu element about the scooter is this bag which you can fit in the boot of this Aether Rista which will actually act as a problem solver for many two-wheeler customers. So what's the conclusion? The X showroom price of Aether Rizda starts from 1.10 lakh and goes up to 1.45 lakh for the top end variant. The only odd thing about the scooter is the rear design. So to accommodate a seat and boot suitable for a family scooter, Aether may have compromised in this area. However, a family scooter with a smaller seat and boot would have been impractical. So if you can overlook this aspect, the Rizda won't disappoint you as a family scooter.